Today, we're going to be talking about how to style your dream kitchen. I wish someone walked me through it, so I'm here to hold your hand and walk you through it. Let's just begin, let us begin. Step one before we get into all of the fun decorating and styling is to set a good foundation. As far as the actual layout of the kitchen goes, I'm not gonna be getting into any major renovating or building your kitchen from scratch, changing up the cabinets or the backsplash or any of that. All of my ideas are going to be renter friendly and working with what you already have. One simple mini renovation you could do in your kitchen is to switch out all of the knobs and handles. If your kitchen cabinets are looking a little bit outdated, then you could add a more modern kitchen handle or something that fits more with your interior style. You can even buy nicer stove knobs. I was very tempted to do this, but I mean, I'm pretty satisfied with the knobs and handles in my kitchen. I also noticed that some of my cabinets and drawers were a little bit loose, so I went ahead and screwed those tightly into place. I can't repeat enough that the most most important thing in your kitchen is that it is a well working system and decorating and making it look cute is secondary. Another renter friendly thing that I was able to do was readjust the shelving. So I have some open shelving behind me. I decided to finally lower one of the shelves so that it balances out more correctly to the level of the jars in the very bottom row. I don't know why I didn't do this sooner because it took like, I don't know, 10 minutes. I'm also able to adjust some shelves in all of the other cabinets. It's a really small thing to adjust the shelving, but if you do it correctly, you will have more space to store more things or it will just look balanced overall depending on how you lay out your decor or your dishes. And once you have all of your kitchen hardware set in place where you want it, it's time to clean and organize your kitchen, which unfortunately I'm not gonna go too into depth of that in this video. But if you haven't seen my last deep cleaning video, I did completely deep clean my kitchen in day two so you could go check that out basically you want to take everything off your kitchen countertop and wipe everything clean get into all the nooks and crannies and sweep off the crumbs and before you put everything back onto your kitchen countertop that is when you will have to ask yourself what do I really need on an everyday basis for my kitchen? You only wanna place your everyday appliances on your kitchen countertop, especially if you have a smaller kitchen. I've seen extremely minimalist kitchens where people leave literally nothing on their kitchen countertop. And while that looks beautiful in photos, I just can't see myself having to take out like my rice cooker every time I need it or take out my coffee machine every single morning and then place it back underneath somewhere. That is just too much effort for me. Placement matters. So when you're putting these appliances back on your kitchen countertop, really think about where it fits best. For me, my essential appliances are my espresso machine and my tea kettle, which I leave next to my kitchen sink and the trash can. And I also leave out my toaster Tovala oven in the corner of my kitchen next to the fridge where I have all of my Tovala meals. Tovala is my convenient smart oven over there. I named her Hottie and Tovala is also the sponsor of today's video. Tovala is the first smart oven paired meal subscription service and they make home cooking incredibly convenient with their smart oven and meals. How it works is Tovala will send you weekly deliveries that take under a minute to prep. Then you just pop it into the oven, scan to cook, relax and enjoy. Enjoy. The Tavala Smart Oven cooks your meals in 20 minutes or less, and you can also use the Smart Oven to cook your own favorite foods with the manual functions of steam, bake, broil, toast, and reheat. Tavala even provides you a library of recipes in their app to get you started. On top of that, it can recognize over 850 grocery items from brands like Pillsbury and Eggo. All you have to do is scan to cook. This is by far the most convenient and delicious meal subscription service I've tried so far. Every meal has been seriously so good and has also given me ideas of what to cook in the oven in the future. Right now, their oven is on sale for only $99, which is a huge save for a smart oven like this. So if you're interested, check out my link in the description. 
The very first idea that I have for your kitchen is to create a little home cafe moment. Whether that's in a corner on the countertop or on an island next to your kitchen, this would be a dedicated space to put all of your drinks, your drink making tools and syrups and what have you. So depending on what you like to drink, you could have a little coffee bar or tea station or a space to put your wine or your matcha or smoothies even, or a little combination of some of those ideas. And this doesn't have to be so obvious, like you don't need to put up a sign that says coffee station here. I don't have that much space in my kitchen, so I just created like a little area where I put my espresso machine, my coffee beans, I put my tea kettle for boiling hot water right next to it, and I keep all of my glass cups and mugs right on top of there. So everything I need to make my drinks are near each other. You could even get like a little tray to put some of these things. If you have a whole wall to dedicate to a space like this, you could add some wall shelving and put your loose leaf teas if you want. I've seen people put their collection of mugs. I've also seen people hang their mugs under the kitchen cabinet. That's something I don't think I would do because I just don't like leaving my ceramics out most of the time. The kitchen is just a nasty place, to be honest. It gets dusty, food and oil splatters everywhere, and I just don't want to have to rinse out my mugs every time, but um, let me know what you think. Does it bother you when you see ceramics left out in kitchens because I see like everyone do it, but it is a nice way to show off some of your ceramics. And also if you're limited on storage space, it's another way to just leave some of these things out. Open shelving. If you don't already have open shelving in your kitchen, like I said, you could either add wall shelving maybe to the sides of your kitchen if you have space. I think adding a little bit of open shelving gives you some space to breathe, like instead of having bulky kitchen cabinets everywhere. And it's also a fun opportunity to style it. So if you do have open shelving already, here are some ideas on what to put on those shelves because I did not know. Clearly, I love putting things in jars. That's the first thing I would suggest doing is putting all of the ingredients that you like to use when cooking into jars. And don't forget to get jars that seal the ingredients and keep it fresh. If you see ingredients that you like the look of, like funky pasta shapes, it's an easy way to switch it up, especially with the seasons, by getting some seasonal ingredients and putting them in jars. I like to put a lot of superfood ingredients in my jars, some nuts, some flakes, some seeds, a bunch of yogurt toppings, honestly, because my husband loves to just make his little yogurt bowls. This is a really easy way to add a variety of color and texture to your kitchen. If I could do it all over again, I don't know if I would put every single ingredient in the same mason jar. I think it's nice to have a variety of maybe different sizes or shapes of jars that you save from like your pasta sauce or your pickles and to clean those out really well and to reuse and recycle those. And on top of that, I think you could get really creative with how you label the jars. I just added an embossed label, but I think you could even add a label in a different language so that you can learn some of the names of the ingredients in another language you're trying to learn maybe. You could also display other essential ingredients when cooking like olive oil and vinegar, maybe leaving jars out for salt, sugar, flour, baking soda. I like to leave my salt and pepper grinders out as well. Another thing you could do with open shelving is to add your favorite cookbooks. I used to just hide away my cookbooks when leaving them out is actually another fun way to add some color and design into your kitchen depending on the graphic that is on the spine of the book. And it's a very easy thing to switch out as well if you want to add some different types of colors or cookbooks. I would highly suggest adding at least one plant to your open shelving and letting it kind of dangle down because it helps to add just some looseness and some life instead of making the shelves look so structured. And once you have those larger items placed on your shelves, I would recommend going antiquing or even going to your local thrift store and looking for little trinkets to fill in the gaps. You don't have to rush this process either if you can't find anything immediately. This is the time to add some unique touches to your shelves. Like I found a little random box that kind of stood out to me and I wanted to put that on top. And my dad got me these really old 
salt and pepper shakers. I also found this folding fruit basket that can also be used to place the cookbooks for when I'm looking for a recipe to try out. That is currently what is on my shelves. If you don't have open shelving, thank you for sticking through that one. The sink area. If the kitchen is the heart of the home, I'd say that the sink area is the heart of the kitchen. I don't think you should have too much going on around the sink area because it just gets wet and nasty. <laughs> but I still place some things. For example, I have a ring cone to hold my rings while I am doing my dirty work. I recently got an acrylic wall mount to put behind the sink so that as I'm washing my dishes, I could play some YouTube video or a podcast in the background. Or if I'm trying to follow a recipe on YouTube, I could place my phone there as well. While I'm not using that for my phone, I have a little monthly calendar up there. Obviously you need your hand soap and dish soap. I don't understand when I see photos of kitchens and like I don't see the hand soap and dish soap. I think definitely get a sponge holder for your sink and let it air dry. And if you don't like the look of your hand soap and dish soap, then you could just get a refillable hand soap and dish soap set so that you could fill it up every time. I'm still looking for a good tray for my hand soap and dish soap, either like an absorbing tray to absorb all the water or one that has holes to ventilate the water because the faucet area always gets wet. I've seen my mom actually keep her dish soap in the sink itself. My sink is a little too small for that, but if you have a big enough sink, I don't think that's a bad idea. Wood! I have an all white kitchen and if I could choose to design my kitchen from scratch, I would want to have just all wood cabinets because it just creates so much warmth and it feels more connected to nature. In my case, since I have an all white kitchen cabinet with a white backsplash and a gray countertop and stainless steel appliances, it's like I knew I needed to add some wood to add some warmth. So any opportunity that I had to add wood, I would. I keep my knives in a wooden knife block. And if you're trying to save space, you could honestly put like a magnetic strip to hold all your knives. Um, but again, I'm trying to add more wood. I've seen a lot of people leave out their wooden cutting boards, especially if they have different shapes and sizes. You could layer them against your backsplash to add some different shape. I just use some of my cutting boards as like a platform to place other things. Another way to add wood to your kitchen is by getting wooden utensils like spoons and spatulas and putting that in a crock. To me, it kind of resembles like a vase of flowers in the way that it's shaped. And I leave this next to the stove top where I usually need it. And if you can, it's a bonus if you could get like a vintage crock, if you could find one of those. I'm looking for one of those myself. Yeah, geez, I don't even have that much wood in my kitchen. <laughs> I don't know what to title this category. Um, since a lot of things in your kitchen are probably hard appliances, it's nice to add some softer textures. Not too much because you want things to be easy to clean, but maybe adding a little runner if you have a kitchen space where there's like a little aisle. I added a rug right underneath the kitchen sink. It's very soft on the feet, especially when I'm just standing washing the dishes. And it's this interesting velvety but waterproof texture. If you do add a rug to your kitchen, make sure that it's not too precious of a rug. Like make sure that you could wash it or clean, but it does help to make your kitchen feel more inviting and comfortable, especially for your feet. Add a nice kitchen towel. Instead of adding a generic kitchen towel, look for one that has more of a design to it that you could also switch up for the seasons. This is one of the easiest things to switch up, but it will make a huge difference in the overall look of your kitchen. It's almost like the throw blanket for the living room. If you really want to add some soft textures to your kitchen, you could actually replace some of the kitchen cabinet doors and add a curtain rod and place a linen curtain to cover that area. Doing something like this really softens the look of a kitchen. Life. <laughs> I don't know what to call these categories, um, but this is the most important thing that you could add to your kitchen. Disregard everything else I'm saying and uh, listen to this one. The kitchen will not come to life unless you have food in it. The saddest kitchens are the ones where you walk into it and you're like, WTF? 
where's the food? So if you haven't already, go to the grocery store, go to your local farmer's market, fill up your fridge with food, figure out what produce you don't have to keep in the fridge and place them in bowls and leave them on your kitchen countertop. And that's a good visual reminder for you to actually use it before it goes bad. I have some ceramic bowls where I could put like onions and garlic and potatoes and um, another bowl for like tomatoes. <laughs> if you don't wanna put them in bowls, you could even just have like a large cutting board and place the produce on top. Use the ingredients that you would use in your meals as home decor because why not? <laughs> it's interchangeable, it's seasonal, it's colorful, it's inspirational. Besides the fruits and the vegetables, you could also leave some herbs out, whether that's basil, mint. I always give my green onions a second life by putting the bulbs into a glass cup and then letting it grow just one more time. I got this propagating base where you could place things like an avocado seed and it will eventually grow roots and the leaves will sprout from on top and I thought that was so fun. I just placed my avocado seed inside this a few days ago, so it's still a work in progress. This vase also doubles as a flower vase, so um, that's the next thing is to add a vase of flowers in your kitchen for special occasions like a change in the seasons or something to add a vase of flowers, adding greenery and fresh produce and even things that are still growing like my avocado seed. Um, it's just a sign that the kitchen is alive and it really does bring life to the space. Lighting. This is especially if your kitchen does not get good lighting. My kitchen gets semi-decent lighting. It's near a window, so that's good. For a lot of you, you might interact with your kitchen the most at nighttime when there is no daylight. So I don't know if you could tell, but it's actually getting dark right now in my own kitchen as I'm filming this. One easy renter-friendly idea is to add under cabinet lighting. I bought one recently, so I don't know what it looks like yet, but it's motion activated. I think I'm gonna put one right over the sink. You could also add some sconce lighting or hang a pendant light. I think adding a pendant light will look good in like the wide angle view of your home or add a little lamp. I've seen a lot of people add lamps that you would normally see in like the living room or the bedroom into the kitchen. And it's so odd to see it. Like it almost looks out of place, but it makes the kitchen feel more homey. I found my dream little lamp to add to my kitchen. It is a lamp made out of real bread from Pamp Shade. It's just been a dream to own one of these creations. And so, uh, <laughs> I got one for my kitchen. It just makes me so happy to see it every time. It's so cute. You could add a candle, preferably one that blends well with food cooking. Again, if I had a kitchen island, the candle and the vase of flowers would be going on the kitchen island. Holders. I really didn't know what else to call this category, but there are so many style choices to be made with all of the holders in your kitchen. A paper towel holder, a spoon or ladle holder, a napkin holder, coasters and pot coasters, an egg holder. I even need a holder for random food or snacks that I get that don't necessarily belong in the pantry or the fridge. And I sometimes never know where to put these things. Like I got some angel food cake the other day and like I don't I don't want to put this in my snack pantry, but I don't want to put this in the fridge because I'm going to eat some soon. It's like, where do I put this? Um, so I'm looking for like a little basket or a tray to hold these little items of food that don't fit in anywhere else. They need a little community somewhere. <laughs> this is a bonus category of just random things I thought of that you could add to your kitchen. The fridge is a great place to add some personalization, add some photos, maybe some fridge magnets that you've collected. I have this kitchen timer, hold up. This cute little kitchen timer, um, it's kind of out of place in my kitchen, not gonna lie, but I just love using it so much. This isn't even about styling your kitchen, this is just about like how useful it could be while you're cooking. If I had a kitchen island, these are more things that I would add to it, but I just don't really have the space to add in my current kitchen. So one is a pastry slash cookie jar container. I would love to just always have some baked 
pastries inside of a container. I would love to add some art, if not like directly on my kitchen backsplash, um, maybe like on the walls next to my kitchen. I would love to add a mini speaker for the kitchen as well to play some music while I'm cooking and cleaning. The one thing I forgot to mention is to display your pots and pans. For lack of storage, I like to keep like a few pots and pans on my stovetop. If you have nice pots and pans like I've seen a lot of copper pots and pans being hung on kitchen walls or like in the island area okay that is about all of the ideas I have on how to style your kitchen I hope you found these ideas to be helpful if you have anything else you want to share please do so down below once again thank you so much to Tavala for sponsoring this video I usually store all of my pots and pans in my actual big oven so it's so nice to have a mini oven be sure to like this video hit subscribe hit the bell, follow me on Chris Soup and Kind Care, maybe even my cat. I love you and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Oh, bye-bye.